to look at a couple of them. Um, well, first of all, the economic shuttle of the president. President uh, Tinubu has been away for a while, and that's because not, not that he's taking a holiday, he's been on a very, very serious um, economic um, uh, shuttle. So we'll look at that, and to help us with that is uh, Dr. Nicholas Felix. He's not a stranger to us. He joins us from uh, his base in the U.S. at the moment. And um, so I'd say a good morning to you, Dr. Felix, Nick, Nicholas Felix. Can you hear us? Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, now, the president, as I was saying, has been quite busy, and um, all of this work, we are expecting he's been at a, he's been at a Riyadh summit, um, you know, uh, the uh, crown prince of Saudi Arabia has uh, pledged on a meeting with the president on the sidelines of the summit is attending that um, uh, the kingdom uh, was actually, you know, going to be of assistance uh, to uh, Nigeria in its uh, reforms as proposed by the Central Bank of Nigeria. So it seems to me that in the fullness of time, and that shouldn't be too long, you know, it might not be immediate, but that shouldn't be too long, um, that there are actually going to be um, uh, gains from the president's uh, economic shuttle. Yes, uh, good morning and good morning to Nigerians. Uh, thank you for having me again. Of course, uh, we should be expecting some productive uh, uh, results out of this economic summit and visit. Uh, the president has been making some bold moves. This is one of them in the past few months. Uh, as an economist and somebody, I believe, uh, we changed the economic state of the country. And these are some of the, the steps the president has to take. And I'm, I'm so glad he's, he's, he's making this, taking these steps in trying to get investors back uh, uh, to Nigeria. So we're expecting the result. It may not be immediate, like you said. You know, sometimes people expect, as soon as the president is returning, uh, the dividends and the benefits of this summit begin to trickle in. It takes a while, a couple of months, we might start seeing results, one or two years, you know, as the time goes. But we're hopeful that uh, this will yield great results for our dear country. Just to, you know, the president's been away, just to sort of give a summary, I think we are to do, uh, Gunjobi, who is on the tour with the president, uh, did uh, produce a report. So let, let's take a look at that and then we'll come back to studio and continue our conversation. The arrival of President Bola Tinumbu and the Saudi Arabian entourage into the hall marked the start of the meeting with focus on investment and business opportunities on both sides. The Nigerian delegation had top government functionaries, ministers, state governors, leaders of business community, and other key stakeholders in attendance, same as the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Again, President Bola Tinumbu, who referred to himself as the number one salesman of Nigeria, assured the Saudi delegation of an open business environment devoid of corruption, bottlenecks, and other factors deterring investment between both countries. It's not an ordinary dream. It's a strong determination that is focused on partnership for success and driven by an ambition, unyielding ambition and commitment to democratic values, free market economy, private sector driven prosperity, and we are at it. We are ready. Who are set on this very transformative set of reforms that are quite compatible but complementary in nature, that bought so much promise for not only our countries and our people, but indeed for our regions as we set the role model and the example of how economic development, prosperity, and putting the interests of the people first is going to result in the future. After an extensive and insightful meeting, which focused on attracting investment in various sectors, including health, energy, digital economy, agriculture, human capital development, logistics, mining, among others. Some of the members of the Nigerian delegation believe that with this move by Mr. President, Nigeria is set to take its real position 
as the giant of Africa. Yes. Before, both before and now during the visit to Saudi Arabia, Mr. President have spoken very well, eloquently. He clearly stated his vision that we want to grow faster than we have been growing and we are an investment destination maybe like no other, a country of 200 and plus million people, you cannot go wrong with investing in it. With the bold measures that he has taken and are being acknowledged by the world, the investment public I'm sure is comported as we have seen from their presentations. And this has been the, this has been the message all in all the places President Aswaju Bola Ahmed Tinibu has been. Since 2015, under the leadership of the Crown Prince and of course Nigeria since May 2023 under the leadership of Mr. President the words that were used on all sides to describe what they have both done in the short time that uh, they have been in office bold, courageous, visionary leadership and uh, a commitment to the private sector a commitment to investment, investment by the domestic uh, entrepreneurs in their own countries as well as abroad. There will be a council that will be set up for the first time between Nigeria and Saudi and that will give opportunity for our investors to come and uh, as a subnational we are ready to queue behind because we have really developed our own investment uh, vision where we want to really make sure that our own uh, GDP will be raised through investment opportunities that are bound that are untapped. For example, they are interested in lithium and gold. We have so, many, so much of it. Arable land, we have 4.2 million arable land. Out of it, only 1.3 million has been uh, developed. So the potential are huge. And of course, I'm very happy to be here with, with the president. Now, after hours of deliberation in this room, the conclusion is that Nigeria and Saudi Arabia set to strengthen ties, address all bottlenecks that have disturbed business transactions between both countries. President Bola Tinumbu is sure that the benefits of this will impact the economy positively. Tolu Lokme Ogunjobi, TVC News, Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Okay, you know, so um, that's a, a sort of a, a recap. Uh, that's a report that went out earlier, but it does beautifully uh, encapsulate uh, what exactly uh, is going on, the direction there. And our uh, guest this morning is Dr. Nicolas, Nicolas Felix. He's uh, uh, based in the U.S. He's an economist himself, a Deputy National Youth Coordinator, uh, APC Presidential Campaign Council, now defunct. Uh, but, you know, uh, and he was talking about that earlier. So um, it does seem such a rich fair, but uh, when you... Uh, speak to me about your your thoughts on, you know, the the the, the naira recovering strength because it, it has been depreciating uh, over uh, over over the last few months, you know, and uh, it's now in a very sorry state. We have problems. This has led to all sorts of problems. You know, food prices have soared. Inflation has soared to uh, to the highest. Uh, I think it was around twenty seven odd. Uh, and so all of these, it seems that President Tinubu is on a mission to grab this particular problem uh, soundly and see how he can bring uh, something to bear uh, on it. That Saudi Arabia is saying that we're behind you in your CBN, the central bank reforms, um, how, how significant is all of that? Of course, uh, like I said, th this trip is, uh, is very timely. And uh, a few things that, uh, that I'm excited about seeing, uh, number one is the, the delegation. The president went with a high power delegation. When I looked at the team, I looked at the, the caliber of people that were in his entourage to this uh, summit. I thought that was very, very good. And number two, uh, you can see that the president went with a business mindset. You know, he didn't go as uh, the commander in chief of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Even while talking about himself, he used his, uh, he described himself as the number one salesperson, which means we are here to do business. This is not just politics. 
This is we're, we're here to sign deals to get business going. I thought that was uh, very, very good. And um, even while introducing himself, talking about himself, you can hear he, he spoke in the sense of as an, as an accountant, as an economics, where he worked, you know, uh, after relocating back from America and all of that. So I thought this were very, very important. Understanding that you're sitting down with businessmen and women, uh, you're sitting down trying to get a, uh, investors to come back to a dear country. So approaching it in this light, I thought that was uh, very, very good. Now, understand that some of these, like we said, is going to take a couple of months to, to be able to see uh, the benefits. The only thing I will hope and I wish that uh, there's a high level of follow-up as soon as I'm, I'm aware the president is back. Uh, the committee that will be set up between Nigeria and Saudi Arabia to ensure that all that was discussed, all that was promised, they begin to carry them out. It's not just enough to, to visit. The president has done his part. Uh, I think we have to do uh, 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 the ministers who went with him, which is something else I was also very proud of. When I was listening to it yesterday, this brought me back to uh, when the president visited the Charter House. I know it was such a big issue when the president was, when the president gave the platform for his uh, team to respond to questions. And I remember I went to channels the next day to kind of talk about that this is, the president has just given us a role play what he's going to be doing when elected as president. And I thought that was great. So seeing that yesterday, uh, I was very excited that this was not just politics, that what he did in Chatham House, proud of his team, saying to the world, I'm not just president alone. I have a great team, great minds, brilliant men and women who are in this team with me to drive the economy. And for him to talk about them and uh, was so proud of them, I, I was very, very, very impressed uh, uh, seeing that, you know, letting the world know that Nigeria, we are, we are great minds, we are great people, not just the negative things that you hear and you see online. So uh, that brought me back to the experience in China, and I was very excited to, to see that. Indeed. We should be expecting uh, the benefit as time goes on. Indeed. Uh, but but we, I suppose as Nigerians, uh, excited as we may be, uh, we also have to be uh, pragmatic that, look, um, the, there's a lot of good that's going to come from all of this, especially if this tempo is sustained and it's clear that uh, President Tinubu is not going to be letting up. Um, but it's still not uh, uh, an immediate term uh, objective. This is going to take us uh, some while, you know, even as all of this good work is going on and taking for granted all that you've just said that there is a, an adequate follow up, you know, once they, once they hit the ground running when they come back home. But I, th I think it's important because, uh, you know, people will see all of this good work going on and would hope that perhaps the dollar being at some, I mean, the Naira to the dollar rate, uh, what, a day or so ago, 1,150 or something like that, uh, they would expect it to come down very, very, you know, quickly. But that's not going to happen. This economics doesn't work like that, right? Certainly, it does not work like that. And uh, I'm expecting that the new CBN governor uh, put some measures to, to bring down the, the, uh, the dollar rate. Um, I, I want to I be hopeful that things are, you know, being put in place. But things cannot just work overnight. You know, I know it may, it may, it may, it may be depressing to hear that. When you attend a summit like this, we're talking about multi-billion dollar business deals. Uh, it, it's going to take a while, but how fast it goes will depend on the committee that is set up. I will expect uh, Mr. President, you know, to follow up, which I know he will, on the, the session of this committee. It shouldn't take much, months for this to happen. And several areas were looked into by different investors. They talked about agriculture, they talked about health, they talked about uh, uh, our refinery, energy, and all of that. We may not get the investment in uh, all these sectors immediately, but at least we should get something going. I would really love to see that they come to partner with us, you know, in terms of our refinery. They've succeeded in, in the oil uh, business, and I would love to see them at least for a, a quick start. We may not get everything started immediately, but for our energy, um, I'll be glad to see that we get started with it. And also, one of the investors talked about building a military hospital. When I heard that, I thought that was very interesting to hear. We do need one in a place like Abuja, so that our president, our governors, 
and uh, VIPs, those who can afford it, will not be, you know, running abroad for, for medical tourism, which you and I know is multi-billion dollars every year. So things like this, the, the Minister of Health, they should follow up and get this going because building a military hospital, even if they get started today, you and I know it will take a couple of years before you see uh, such hospital functioning. So we, we need to, you know, keep the pace going and not just end the meeting there. The Crown Prince was seated, was seated and they came with their own uh, delegation. It tells me that they mean business, but there should be a, 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 a serious follow-up so that we begin to see some of these investors coming in whenever they need to, to, to do to get started, at least in some sectors that they are interested in. Mm. Hmm. Uh, you know, I, well, it's it's interesting you mentioned the uh, the crown prince there because um, uh, Mohammed uh, MB uh, MBS, I believe Mohammed bin uh, Salman, uh, uh, you know Mohammed uh, bin Salman, uh, he reportedly pledged to, you know, and as we know, uh, Saudi Arabia is the largest producer of crude, and so meeting with our president on the sidelines of uh, this uh, summit that they're at, uh, he was said to have said, uh, he, he was reported to have said that. Um, they would make, um, you know, substantial dollars uh, uh, available to us. I didn't quite understand that. Do you have a better sense of what it means uh, that to support the ongoing CBN reforms uh, exchange regime, Saudi Arabia, the world's um, largest producer, will make available a substantial deposit of foreign exchange to boost Nigeria's forex liquidity? Would you give us uh, some clarity on what exactly that could mean? I, I think that's because of the the, the uh, flow, flow, flow that we're currently experiencing. And you and I know we, we need some level of high, high investment to be able to get the dollar down. It's not just going to happen by just mere wishes. So uh, I'm sure that was the discussion. And for the Saudi prince to have promised to do that, again, we want to get we want to see this happen immediately. So at least uh, when Nigerians see that you know the dollar is coming down. Uh, that would be very encouraging for for the average Nigeria out there to show that this trip, this economic uh, summit trip, was uh, uh, a very good one. I was very productive. I think that's one of the things that will happen immediately if they do move forward to you know supporting uh, by by giving us the the fund that was promised by the Crown Prince. Every other form of investment may take a while, but if this is done immediately, I think we will begin to see at least. I don't know how far the dollar will drop, but at least we'll, we'll begin to see at least come down under a thousand. That will go a long way. It will, um, because uh, as you know, we're in the midst of a, a, a painful inflation that has sent food prices soaring in Nigeria. And uh, unfortunately, the National Bureau of Statistics says that um, the, 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 the situation is expected to um, not improve. Uh, uh, shortly. So this uh, is like we, Nigeria needs every little bit of help it can get. Even things that don't immediately impact um, forex. You'll be surprised. Um, vegetables, uh, bread, uh, uh, yam tubers, as the National Bureau of Statistics mm. was reporting, all of these things are suddenly now affected uh, by the fact that um, the Naira to the dollar exchange rate is in such a sorry state. What would be your very brief uh, explanation uh, as to how, why that is going on? I mean, on? I, I think also one, one thing that is, apart from just the Naira exchange rate, the, the first subsidy that was removed uh, is also affecting it. You know, uh, FOIA has gone up uh, drastically, so, and transportation definitely has gone up. So that definitely is what is affecting it. But that's why we need every investment as possible. That's why we need to get more money in the hands of Nigerians to spend. That's why we need as much investment in, in Nigeria today to be able to cushion this effect. If the first subsidy is gone, the president said it that it's not coming back. And how then do we get Nigerians you know, out there to spend money? We need to get employment. We need to be able to uh, increase employment among young people, get investors working. Again, this will help us, you know, uh, so the, what is affecting the price of goods is not just the dollar, it's also the first subsidy, the price of oil that has really gone up. All right, then. Uh, I'll tell you what, uh, Nicholas, uh, we'll take a break now, uh, a short break.